Hi, my name is Nancy. Welcome to the Child at Heart Club. So that's he for him, God. My little easel here for art. R for religion and T for your talent. Today we're going to do a hope chest. Now I want you to know that I started this hope chest maybe 10 years ago. And it's taking a lesson like this for me to get this done. So don't be like me. Finish projects. And set yourself deadlines and do it. Uh, so uh, hope chest, you can, I bought this at a, it was actually an unpainted uh, furniture store. But I think there's places like Hobby Lobby and Michael's and all that sell um, raw wood. Uh, and be, in case I forget to tell you, after I paint this whole trunk, I'm going to spray it with a sealer. And it'll make it shiny, and it'll make it uh, finished, and it will be um, <clears throat> uh, more more of, a, of the finished product that you're going to want for a gift. So this is a gift-making club. My daughter just got married, <clears throat> and I decided to paint on her hope chest for her keepsakes inside all of the things she loves so this is going to take a bit of time but we're going to paint uh, different landscapes different favorite places you can paint your seasons you can paint a favorite pet for somebody and don't go telling me that you don't have any talent because when you get it on the wood and everything uh, it just it's just going to look spectacular or if you're really nervous about it have, have a talented relative, the, my buddy system, where someone else helps and shows you over your shoulder perspective and all that. <clears throat> We're going to start with Lake Powell. It's one of Julie's favorite places. We've gone there all along. And um, so I, I'm going to actually use the wood grain. Lake Powell looks like this. So I picked a place. We're not going to be able to see this too well. I picked a place. It's called Cookie Jar. It's her favorite place. But if you can see, some of the wood grain looks exactly like the strata in the, um, in the rocks. By the way, our featured famous artist today is Edward Hicks. He, he was... Um, from the 1780 to 1849 he lived. He was a religious minister. He was actually a Quaker. So I always choose religious masterpieces. Um, in fact, he's such a Quaker that here are some Quakers meeting a bunch of Indians. You can look up. This is called Peaceable Kingdom. And I thought it was perfect for a hope chest. What it says about Peaceable, he took it from Isaiah 11 where um, it is described as a child floating with his hand on a lion that Isaiah talks about someday in heaven there will be a wolf with a lamb, a leopard with a kid, a calf with a young lion, and, and a little child shall lead them. These little children look pretty grown up, but they are children. He made 65 versions of this. It was so popular. A cow and a bear shall feed their young ones, and they shall lie down together. So um, <clears throat> it is um, inspiring. I cannot believe this lion's eyes are so eye-catching. But he's done a whole scene. He's got through trees and everything. And over across this gorge are these uh, Quakers and Indians trying to make peace. They're living in a peaceable kingdom back then. Um, got, I poured a whole palette of colors. I just used all the ones that you can get. And they, like I said, these are famous names. I love their names. You know, Vermilion. You gotta love Vermilion. That's gonna be the color of the poppy field that Julie was always hiking in. And then there's crimson, that'll be great on the apples. And how about this name? Azil Brilliant. All right, 
These are 200, 300. These are ancient names of the art. They use these acrylics called student on student oil, but they're acrylics. Have the, the real professional names that, that were used by the French masters, and all the way back, they would grind all their powders and and make it. And then they would point in their lips, their brush, and get lead poisoning. But we don't do that. <clears throat> so back to Lake Powell. This is a really cool cookie jar. Like I said, I'm going to use the um, the wood grain to look just like one of the planes um, in this. The only thing I'm actually going to have to do with this is um, finish some sky. I'm going to take some of this bright sky blue color. I always like to mix two colors, three colors, and we're going to, um, actually Powell is known for having, well it does storm, it does rain a lot, and we're going to just get the sky going here, and we're going to take it to the edge, cookie jar kind of slants, and on big surfaces I like to use a sponge brush, so I'm, I'm going to leave this brown just naturally, and let it, um, let it be part of part of this trunk. So this is where I'm just going to kind of get the background taken care of. So <clears throat> I'm going to do four seams. I'm going to do all four sides of this trunk because she's gotten married and she's moved from Southern California and now she's up in Northern California and I need to get this done. Okay, so I can keep working with this. Then I'm going to fill in a few details about cookie jar. The other thing I want to do is Lake Powell is known for the most incredibly warm. It's in Utah, it's in Arizona. The most incredibly warm, greenish water. And I don't mean polluted green, just a really pretty green. And um, The water is this color. It really is this color. So I'm going to put a little water down here. It makes me wish I was going there. Okay. And I learned last summer when I was kicking in this water that water has the waves, you know, they're very, they're very uh, deliberate. They're very, they kind of, they kind of have shapes. It's just the coolest thing. Study some pictures of water, you're not going to believe it. And so then I'm just going to kind of smooth all that over. And I'm going to make an edge to the land. This this rock is so beautiful. So I'll kind of use this along the edge. And spread it out. Nothing like a little finger painting. These, these boulders are kind of damp around the edge. All right, so I'm going to paint cookie jar a little bit. Back at my original picture here. It's got some really cool strata in it. It actually, whenever I'm out in the water looking at this, it has a gorgeous gray. So I'm going to take this dark brown, And I'm going to make a strata here, and 
There's a there's this thumbnail rock that goes up, a thumb, and then there's other shapes back there. They go on behind Cookie Jar, some freestanding boulders. Um, another strata up here of dark. And then you got your little nubby at the top, which is where we get the name Cookie Jar. And it's kind of a square shape, actually. And some more lumpy, lumpy stuff over here. More strata. There's actually a few caves down here. And then I'm going to go to the gray. It's actually a really cool silver gray layer. It's actually got a touch of blue in it. I'm telling you every time I'm looking at it. These particular rocks through here have some gray blue in them. And it's, um, there's a few up here. And it goes all off to the side. And rocks always have a few colors of white and gray and all of that. And this just really lends itself to that the strata. The strata goes back and forth. It's really cool. So let me get some brown here. And I think I'll kind of, let's see, take the brown, lighten it a little bit. Trying to get to this wood color here. I'm going to need a little more orangey color to get to that wood. And I'm going to kind of like make this where it's not exactly a straight line. But it's, these rocks are so smooth and wonderful to walk on. I'm going to disappear most of that with my finger painting. All right, so I think that this cookie jar would do well to have something to tie it all together. So it is going to get a little bit of this treatment. And this is the color it starts to become a crimson at sunset. So I'm just kind of swiping over it. So one last thing, there is going to be a shadow side to this darling mountain. Actually, some of it comes down, it comes down a little bit right here too. So we're going to make a shadow on this side because there's a light side and then there is a dark side. So here's the light side, it's more light. And I have to do the same thing for the jar top. So it's got a light side and it's got a dark side. And that's a little light. There we go. So Julie's going to absolutely know what this is. Um, I think we have a hound howling in the background. It's really cool to have plain air art. You know, I think I'm going to add a little uh, water shadow. Like, <laughs> like over here. I think I'll put in some Give it a little more interest. And I'm not going to get into painting some fish. But, so that's kind of a darker side of the water, so let's make this side a little lighter. This water is just incredible. You'd think I was selling tickets to the National Park of Lake Powell. All right, that's Cookie Jar. Um...
moving right along. And I'll touch this up a little bit, but for right now, this is going to be the hard one. My daughter got married. So she got married two weeks before COVID hit. And um, which was wonderful. And we live in Redlands, which is all orange groves. And she loved, she found a venue that was orange groves and the little white wildflowers, or roses. So I, like I said, I started this before, so now I'm continuing it. So this is where she got married. Oh, big sigh. So now I'm going to find a picture of the bride. All right, and this is her. First, let's do the trellis, the uh, or ornamental trellis. Because this is going to mean a lot to her in her hope chest. So I'm using the wood grain right here. I'm working around the post that this is built on. Um, so, boy, I love that hound in the background. I always like two colors, two colors, the brown, the dark brown. And so it was a trellis that came across here. And where did it end? It ended there. And there was a top piece. And the dimension is it's wider here and gets smaller because it gets further away. And then there were all of these kind of, um, these kind of things. Fatter to skinniest. And they all have to be on the same line. And kind of slanting. So this is kind of dragging. I need a little tad bit more water on it. And um, fortunately, I'm going to hide my trellis in some huge flower arrangements that she had. So, and they came out to the top a little bit, and I'm going to whip along through here. I'm going to do these pretty fast. Okay, so she had. Pretty awesome flowers. I'm going to do one of these. First, I'm going to do the. Uh, this brush is too big. I'm going to do the. Netting. She had all this netting. And I'm going to cover up this wood here. So she had two pieces of netting. And this is acrylic at its best. And then this netting came all the way down through here. And I'm going to go around my natural knot, knotty wood here. This is kind of the same kind of folk art that Edward Hicks did. Primitive. I'm sure there have been a lot of wedding chests, a lot of hope chests. And then you paint it on wood like this. All right, so I'm going to give this, you know, light and shadow. I'm going to give it just a slight little fold. We're going to do a few folds in it, a few little ripples. I added a little tiny bit of brown. And there's a few folds in it. I gotta make this a little more intense to cover this up. And now we're gonna go to the beautiful flowers. So there are, um, if she wanted very pale colors, you're gonna know all about her wedding, huh? So very slight bit, they were slightly blush. 
and they were all around here and this is going to go fast she had a gazillion dollars worth of flowers there and here and all down the front and they went down like this and like this and like this and like this and then they were on this post over here this far away post you get a little red to accentuate them to show that they're um, easy way to do a rose huh so now we're going to go back to more veil or more of this white this cool um, netting and it came to a point and the netting came all the way to here I love that hound it really sounds like a hound okay some more netting and that went up to here and we're going to do the big, the same folds, maybe some little folding up at the top, very slight folds, 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 and that's going to do that, except we got to add our binding flowers right here. Okay, so... We're coming along. Always stand back and look and go back. Now we got to tackle. I got to tackle her white dress. So let me look at my picture. And we got to do the people. So I thought it was easiest to do her dad and Julie's dress because her dad has gray hair and this is his head right here. He's got a shock of gray hair. So this is him from the back. He just walked her up. Let's see. We're going to have to give him a haircut, right? And he has a little ear on the left side. Anyway, I'll keep working on this without keeping you. So then she's blonde. And she is going to want me to do the right shade of blonde, right? So it's a very cool blonde that she has with her hair. Underneath this veil, I'm going to do a little foundation. She had all these pretty spirals. And that hardly even looks blonde, but... Okay, she's going to scold me if I get it too yellow. Okay, there's a blonde in there. Now, her veil. Her veil, oh, I, shoot, I'm so glad I didn't lose it. Oh, wait, so she's got, yeah, that's some skin. She's got some skin on her arm, too. It's kind of pinkish arm that she has and a little bit of that color will give her some skin color so her arm is coming down here and her shoulder and another one shows through here all right let's um work on this veil very complicated veil um, she actually has a really pretty waistline in this dress, 
and a lot of little sparkles. I'm giving you more detail than necessary. But right here is a focus point of where her, her waist was. And then there were all these sequins. Didn't that go fast? All right, so now we're gonna do some more with the white fluff. Her dress actually is underneath, so it's pretty solid color. This is a bristle, this is the uh, horse hair. Sable, it's too soft. So I'm gonna go with more of um, Vore, which is the, the Vore brush. Um, try this. No. So, find it. Here's a good one. Just need to clean it. I'll get this dress pink again. So it bows out to here. Okay. differentiate between this I'm rolling my brush and I'm making an edge to this dress differentiate between this and the veil that's going to come over it and if you've ever seen fabulous paintings of Jesus's white robe you'll you'll, you'll realize there are probably 28 colors of white it's a spectacular thing. White is, is a study all its own. So we've actually got some what looks like some seams. Uh, I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I smother her in a veil. Let me get her dad's uh, black suit, his tuxedo. And I did pour some black. So there's just kind of a nice simple shape here of shoulders. And there's a bend at the elbow. And that's his jacket. This brush is too big. And then his pants kind of get lost in, in this whole dress. Okay. There's a hair that is going to mess me up. Yeah. And he's got his legs. Jacket. I think I'm holding my breath. Sometimes you can pin your finger pretty well and it pins as long as you're not touching a bunch of wet goopy paint. that point right there where in the picture it just comes to a point and then goes down. I'm going to throw this brush away. This is throwing me off. I think I'll put just a slight seam between the two pant legs and bottom of his coat. Just kind of set it off. And I'll work on that some more. 
Um, and I think that's pretty good. So Julie chose this vineyard for the orange groves in the background. I know what I forgot. And she wanted the snow-capped mountains. She got married mid-February. She wanted this place for the white wild roses that were just growing in the bushes. So we're just going to add some white wild roses. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to um I'm going to wait to do oh so there's two other paths here. Let's see how thick this is. That's pretty watery. This path was over grass. And it was a fabric. Oh, and I forgot. It was covered with roses. It's all coming back to me since it was a blur back then. So that was wrong. So I'm going to uh, get a clean sponge. And this, um, this is going to be kind of like white with a tad bit of green. Because there was some, it showed through. Just a little wetter. This is their primrose path that they walk down. And then once again, we're going to do the pale, pale, pale pink. It's a little more flat. Okay. White and red. And these little petals, petals are kind of, some of them are V-shaped, but I actually think it's easiest to just to do this. And got out on the grass, right? I think I'm going to brave her veil now. Let's see here. And when you have a ton of paint on a brush, it's called a loaded brush. So here we go. I got to go find her veil again. Well, I can remember. So this veil starts up here. Big brush for a veil, huh? So I'm just going to hint, hint at this beautiful veil. It does have like a crown at the top there. And then it transcends her dress and comes out to here. And I'm going to use the wood grain. The wood grain is wonderful. And there actually was a bunch of little sparkler stuff. The veil eclipsed right there. So other than just filling in a little bit in here. Okay. Now there was some sparkle. So I'm going to get some dark, some dark, that looks like silver, and I'm going to go around the rim. Back, it goes up here. Very delicate, and I am going to call it a day. It's always a good time to stop when you're ahead. So that's enough for here. I'm going to segue. These take are such a challenge because they're so easy to procrastinate. I'm going to tell you about a trip we took to Scotland. It was an epic birthday of mine. We went to Scotland. Julie loves waterfalls. Here's a waterfall by the ocean. A lot of ocean in Scotland. So what I'm going to do, we have 
We found our family castle, Scalbo Castle. It's just silhouetted here. And I'm going to just show you a quick silhouette. This is what it looked like. And I only intend to do a silhouette. And I think I'm going to do it with the silhouette. Nah, I think I'll use a paintbrush. So these colors, this actually I'm using the wood again. I'll have to get rid of this knot. This, this is actually a, a mountain. And the castle ruins were there. And I guess our family fought in these ruins through the dark ages. Sometimes they won, sometimes they lost. So I'm just going to use silhouette brown. I'm gonna, I like to make some richness here. Brown and it's dark brown and a tad bit of green. And I'm going to make, so the castle is broken down In fact, it's a little foggy back there. It's a little, I'm going to add some gray because when you go far away, there's more purple haze colors. If you're closer, there's more orange colors. If you look out in the distance, the ones that are closer are more orange. So this is actually kind of going to be kind of muted. So here's the shape of this ruins, castle ruins that are breaking down. You can walk right up to it. We couldn't believe it. It was spectacular. Highlight of my life. And Julie was there. And so I'm going to keep going across. There's, it's actually breaking down into crumbles. But there was a little spot where I could see some blue sky through a window. And I'm going to leave a little blue sky. And here as well. And then it came down. And there was another tower type thing here. We actually stayed in a 600 year old tower. And as I slept on the top floor of a 600 year old castle, I'll fill it in there, in Edinburgh. And when I fell asleep at night, I said to myself, for 600 years, there are probably many centuries in which people went to sleep and they were not in peace. They didn't sleep in peace. So I'm going to just finish filling in the silhouette. You can tell I like to shove my brush around a lot. I'm going to add a bit more of a brick color. So some of it had sort of a brick color. It's not very distinct in my picture. It's just sort of back there. And then there's some distant trees up against it. Kind of like this. And we only have one more side to do after this. So I'll finish this a little more later, a little more detail. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to just leave this kind of like a hill, the hill that it was that we had to climb up to. I know what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to try to do this fast gotta find my picture. So as you know, there are Scottish cows. I wish I knew their name. And they were here on the field. 
Here he is. Here he is. So he's a big guy, and he is reddish. He is a mustard and this color. He's a redhead. Of course. That's the way it is in Scotland. So you got a big belly. This brush is too big. He's got a big belly. I'll get my color again. And he's in he's in a lot of shadow. But first we're gonna draw him. And I'm just gonna fill him in. And he's got skinny. He's got a tuft here and a tuft here. And then he's got some legs that go down into the grass. We can bury him in some grass. Not bury him, lower him. He can be standing in some grass. And he is really shaggy. And here's a back leg and here's a front leg. And uh, he's got a pointy, his back looks like a cow. You know how they come to this boxy point at the back? So then he comes across, he's all curly. All right, and then he's got a head, and it's in the shadow. So his head's going to be darker, and it's a total triangle. And it's big. So shadow is right here under his armpit, if you, if you will. And his whole chest is pretty dark. but we don't want to lose our differentiation. He's got this really cool mangy stuff hanging down here. And as you know, they have them right up here on their, on their brow. And this side's more lit up with that color. And he's got a belly. This one almost looks pregnant. He's a belly. I'm always looking at pictures. Um, so this shadow is before here, before the shadow. So um, now I can't wait to hide his legs in some grassy stuff. I'm really having fun with the. Um, sponge brush today because it sure goes down fast. And of course then he's going to make a shadow. Um, now we got to detail him up a little bit. He does have some I really can't actually see them, but what I can see is his chin comes to more of a point, and it's dark. So it comes down here. Too much paint. Comes, this is the dark brown. The shape is like this, and then this goes up like this. And then the neatest thing about this guy and it's, it's really cool. His shiny nose lights up. It's a little light. And then he's got these horns that are spectacular. And they, they have, I'm going to do a black and a white sp spiral. Whoops, I almost lost him. No, I don't want to lose him. So it goes like this. Black and white. And it goes up from here, and I'm twisting my brush. And then this one comes kind of weird, kind of forward-ish from the angle that he's standing in my picture, kind of like that. And I think we can center him with some dark eyes. He's just a friendly friendly guy, I'm sure. Not that I got out on the pasture. 
This mane is to be taken very seriously. It hangs over their face. It's really cool. So they don't. I didn't see a tail really, but um, a few more colors on him and some fuzz. We're gonna fuzz him up a little. They must, they must stay warm. Well, and it rains. I went into a place with my kids. Got me a plot of land there, so I'm called Lady Nancy Murray. Anyway, so they got a plot of land and we planted an oak tree. And um, in the store, they said, "Oh, your 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 ancestors came across. Lucky them." because we have four seasons. They said we have heavy rain, we have lightning rain, we have light showers, and we have muddy rain. And I thought, wow. I think I'm gonna give him just the tiniest little, hardly, shine dot on his eyeball, and then we are done. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to work on him some more. Actually, I can't leave it here. He's, his head's too brown compared to his body. Got to work on that a little. But his head really is in a shadow, and it really is that dark chocolate. But I got to make him look like he's made from the same piece. They have kind of thin legs considering what big guys they are. And then I'll add a little light orangish to his face too because he is an orange beast. Alright, so um, that's that. Now I wanted to show you the memory verse. So as you can tell I'm wearing my smock. I made this smock and my paint is crumbling off of it. But you can make a smock. It's called the crown of uh, uh, stars on your crown. So when you do a good deed, like donate something like this, then you can paint you can paint your stars on your crown. But you can't talk about it because it has to be a secret. So one of my lesson on making this uh, crown <coughs> smock was about a certain group of religious people during the 1170s whose kids they were all being persecuted and terrible things. And they, they hid inside their poncho um, their memory verses. And they took them to university and they took their lives at stake uh, sharing quotes because we the Bibles were being burned down to about 45 in the world back then. So here's the hidden clandestine pocket. And it goes in here. And I'm going to pull this out often and, and remember to say it. So I wanted to say the verse, and, and, and I'm going to paint this on here somewhere, and it says, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Don't forget to... Use your logo. My logo is this logo. It's a two brushes that are crossed. And we'll see you next lesson. Thanks.